ciao and welcome to Vietnam. Today we're sharing everything you need to know before traveling to this absolutely beautiful and super affordable country. trip to the land of pho and banh mi or have always wanted to travel to Vietnam, then look no further. We'll be covering everything from entry requirements and visas, daily budgets, where to stay, what to pack, how to get around, scams, what to do, what to skip and of course safety. Whether you're a tourist or a future English teacher or a motorbike enthusiast, we think you'll find this video extremely helpful and if you do, we'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. We used to live in Vietnam in 2018 teaching English and we recently visited again this year and 100% think it's thoroughly worth exploring. Vietnam has amazing food, coffee, friendly and fun people, incredible landscapes and best of all you won't break your back when you travel there either. We certainly learned a lot during our 10 months of being in Vietnam and we want to share it all with you now to help you better prepare for your future trip. Let's get started with how to get to Vietnam. If you've looked at Vietnam on a map, you'll notice it's an incredibly long and thin country. Now you can decide to fly into one of the major cities in the middle, like Da Nang for example, but by far the most popular thing to do is to start at either one of the ends, where the two biggest cities of Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City are located. We've been to both and in all honesty, we'd suggest starting your trip in Hanoi. Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam and is incredibly charming. Ho Chi Minh City on the other hand is more modern, a lot bigger and has more of a young party scene. Both airports are massive and see flights from all over the world. Whichever city you choose, you can expect around a 20 to 40 minute drive into the city. We'll discuss what transport methods to use a bit later in the video, but for now let's touch on visas. The majority of countries will need to purchase an e-visa 3 to 5 business days before travel using this link. <laughs> the cost is 25 USD for a single entry visa and $50 USD for a multiple entry visa and they are valid for up to 90 days. Some countries even get a free visa on arrival for up to 45 days. The UK is one of them. But we suggest checking this link to see if your country is eligible. Vietnam often changes their visa rules, so make sure you check for the latest requirements before you travel. When you land, you can just show a screenshot of your e-visa on your phone to the immigration officers. No outward flight was needed or asked for in case you do plan on booking a one-way ticket. The tourist visas are not extendable though, so you will effectively need to do a visa run if you plan to stay longer in Vietnam. And if you're interested in teaching English in Vietnam, then check out Ninja Teacher's channel. He always shares the latest work visa information in his videos. Alright, next up is currency. The currency in Vietnam is the Vietnamese Dong. It is currently around 24,000 Vietnamese Dong to 1 US dollar and around 26,000 to the Euro. And for our fellow South Africans, it's around 1,200 Dong to 1 Rand. A dollar in Vietnam can get you a Vietnamese coffee or a banh mi or a pho in some places. Vietnam is honestly one of the cheapest countries in the world. So, how do you get your hands on some dong? Well, basically, <laughs> the ATMs are basically everywhere. There's even one as we got off the plane before we went through immigration. Then after immigration, there's more ATMs by the exit doors. It's perfectly safe and acceptable to use these ATMs in the airport. Some of the big brands you can trust are BidV, MSB, Vietin Bank, Agribank and HSBC. Outside the airport, there are ATMs scattered all over the city, so as long as you use one of the banks we've mentioned here, you'll be perfectly fine. Then to exchange foreign currency, once you're through customs, there are many independent exchange booths you can use, and there are also these cell phone booths that offer a decent exchange rate as far as exchanging at the airport goes. The rate will always be better outside the airport, so if you can wait, then we'd recommend exchanging in the city. Again, like ATMs, money exchange places are pretty common in most cities. Things like Apple Pay and Google Pay also work really well, so you can tap your Visa card at any of the cafes, restaurants and shops. We just needed a little bit of cash for shopping in the markets, at the street food vendors and obviously tips for our guides etc. Because a little goes a long way here, you do not need huge lumps of cash. We only used about $160 in cash for our two week trip and we used Apple Pay and credit cards for everything else. 
Alright, let's go over the best time to visit. As we mentioned, Vietnam is a relatively large country and it's long and thin, so weather differs by region. But you can basically split the weather patterns into the north and south systems. Our recent trip was all based in the north and the weather for there is as follows. There are four seasons, winter is from November to March, summer is from May to August, and the months in between are the transitional spring and autumn months. Winter is cooler and drier and at times it even snows in the far north. That's how cold it can get. Summer is humid and wet. If you're planning for the north to visit Sapa, Ninbin, Hanoi, etc, then plan for the transitional months of October and November. If you want to see Sapa rice fields in their glory, then the best month is September before the harvest and just after rainy season. This is when the rice fields are greeny yellow and lush and there's a lot less rain. We went in August and it was so beautiful, but it was still quite hot and it rained a ton. Our trekking in Sapa was full of mud as well. <laughs> For the south of Vietnam, it's basically hot and hotter. There are just two seasons, wet season and dry season. Wet season is from May to October and dry season is basically the rest of the year, November to April. Honestly, Vietnam isn't much fun in the middle of the rainy season. There is a lot of flooding and the beaches get completely screwed when the big storms roll in. We knew this because we were in the Chang in December 2018 and we thought we'd get a beautiful beach holiday. Instead, <laughs> it looked like this the entire time. Uh, bleak. In terms of peak tourist season for Vietnam, because this is important, they are the Christmas period, December, Jan, Feb and March and the European American summer months of July, August and September. We visited the north of Vietnam in August in the middle of busy season and we couldn't get over how many foreign tourists there were. Vietnam was absolutely popping off and probably still is. <laughs> so in conclusion, the best time to visit is in the shoulder months of October, November and in April, May and June. Okay, up next, what to pack? Pack according to the season you're traveling in as well as the area you intend to visit, either the north or the south as mentioned above. And always make sure you've got a good raincoat in case it rains. If you're traveling to the north in the December to March months, then temperatures can range between 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, depending on how far north you go and how high up in elevation as well. So do make sure to bring warmer clothing if that's the case. There are a couple of stores that you can buy some warm K-Way like fluffy jackets and stuff though. Besides that, if you plan to only visit the south of the country, then just pack your normal usual hot weather attire, shorts, sandals, t-shirts, swimsuits, etc. for summer. When it's hot in Vietnam, it's very hot. So be warned, the humidity, especially in the summer months, can be quite hectic. So make sure you're wearing like airy stuff. Luckily though, it's not a conservative country, so you don't need to cover up your shoulders and all things like that, unless you're going into the temples or pagodas. You'll even see Vietnamese men, shirtless everywhere, hanging their bellies out. Dude, feel free to do the same. Not joking. <laughs> then for shoes, we recommend a good pair of hiking or running shoes that you don't mind getting muddy and dirty. Just look at how Claire's got when we were in Sapa. It was absolutely insane. That was during rainy season though. Yeah, just make sure they're very comfy. You're going to do a lot of walking in Vietnam. Oh, it's awesome though, fun walking. Let's go over the rest of what to pack very quickly though. A hat, or we actually recommend purchasing a Vietnamese hat for the sun and the rain and the memories and the pictures. That thing is just a game changer, guys. <laughs> Next, a power bank, always have a waterproof camera or a cover for your phone, bug spray, there are quite a few mosquitoes in Vietnam, definitely motion sickness tablets or motion sickness bracelets, it's a must, you'll be spending a lot of time in transportation, buses, shuttles, all sorts, and yo, I suffered, it was hectic, it was real, uh, you'll thank us later. Next, sunscreen is a big must, you'll be in the sun a lot. Next is a lock for your belongings and your luggage. Then a driver's license for motorbike rental, although in the smaller towns they won't even bother asking. If you're going to teach English in Vietnam, you need to dress very conservatively. They take that quite seriously, so bring conservative clothing with you. And if you're going to be motorbiking, bring good protective gear, because yeah, just do it. <laughs> And finally, medicines, 
traveler's diarrhea, antibiotics of course. Since this is Southeast Asia, we do not travel without antibiotics. Uh, anxiety meds. This is actually important. Vietnam is chaotic and overwhelming. You'll need that if you need in general life. Then ladies, thrush is a reality in these type of climates. Be prepared. And if you forget anything, you'll find a lot of the stuff in the malls. Although we found the shopping isn't the best in Vietnam, especially yeah, really. with regards to sizing and also Western groceries. And finally, we took that all in one big check-in luggage bag and we had no issues lugging them around on buses, in taxis, whatever. It was totally okay. And then when you do the sapper tracking, you'll be hiking and you're only allowed a small backpack. But most of the hotels in Sapa are so happy to store your luggage for you for free until you check in. Alright, next up is apps to download. Grab app to order your taxis, food, medicine. We use this a ton during our time there. And then there's also Gojek, which is the alternative to Grab, and it is sometimes a little bit cheaper. Then you're going to want to download Venaphone or Viatel. Or you can get the Air Addo app for an eSIM. It's cheaper to get SIM cards in Vietnam though, but we'll discuss the SIM cards a little bit later. Next is going to be Google Translate, although we hardly needed it in the touristy areas and when we were with our guides. It can still come in handy though when you go off the beaten track. Make sure you do download the languages to use offline for when you don't have signal too. Next is going to be Google Maps, the same thing basically, you're going to use it to find restaurants, where to eat, best cafes, the nearest beaches, etc. We do share our Vietnam Google Map link with you in our resource pack, which basically has all the places we ate at, the hotels we stayed at, and over 20 accommodation options for all different budgets, so check the first link in the description. We recommend downloading offline maps in case you are not in Wi-Fi range and out of data so that you can still basically work offline. Then make sure you get Apple Pay or Google Pay set up. As we said, we used ours all the time and it was very convenient. Then if you don't already have WhatsApp, we recommend getting it. It's used all the time in Vietnam for basically messaging and organizing things with your guides. It came in super handy. Then we always have booking.com. We recommend it to manage your bookings, to check your check-in times, talk to your hosts, etc. The next app is Airbnb. It's actually seemed to be a little bit cheaper than booking.com we found when we were in Vietnam. We think you get a little bit more value for your money. A lot more. <laughs> then definitely you need to get Get Your Guide. For all of your tour bookings, it's an absolute must. We'll leave a link for you down below. And in our resource pack. And finally, the last app is Chop for grocery deliveries if you want to cook breakfasts and meals for yourself. It can be hard to find Western breakfasts easily in Vietnam, so that's super helpful. The next section though is accommodation. Vietnam is one of the cheapest countries to visit and accommodation is no exception. You've got all sorts, you've got hostels, hotels, condo buildings, cute Airbnbs, average hotels, five-star hotels, luxury cruises, Budget cruises, absolutely everything. The only thing it probably doesn't have is like big villas that you can share with a bunch of friends and family. Um, you can find hostels for as little as $15 a night, hotels and Airbnbs for like $20 to $30 a night, and then you can do it very luxuriously as well, staying in our favorite hotel chain of Fusion, literally without breaking the bank. Our first ever hotel collab was Fusion Resorts Food Quark, and they're still one of our best hotels we've ever, ever stayed at. A room there including all meals, like multiple restaurants, all lavish, was like $250 to $300 a night. It was an absolute steal, and honestly, the hospitality in Vietnam is fantastic, especially when you're paying a little bit more. Our cruise in Halong Bay was around $180 per night and it was super luxe guys, it was, it was good. And then we use Airbnb and Booking.com as we mentioned to book our accommodation but if you're looking to lock in a long term accommodation, look at expats in Vietnam Facebook groups. Alright, next up is budget. Ultimately the price of your trip will depend on you and your itinerary. But like we said, if you want bang for your buck, Habibi come to Vietnam. <laughs> if you are going to be backpacking, then prices will range between 20 to 35 US dollars a day. For comfort like us, then it should cost you around 35 to 70 dollars a day. And then if you plan to be a bit more luxurious, you could spend anywhere above 100 dollars a day. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's not really that expensive. No. Things that were expensive for Vietnamese standards though were Western restaurants and Western grocery shops for sure. Our recent trip to Northern Vietnam in 2023 cost us $930 for two people. That's around $66 a day. All food, accommodation, entertainment is included in that. Because we worked with a local company and a tour agency while we were there though, one thing we didn't pay for was our transfers to and from Sapa and Ninbin, but they weren't too expensive, somewhere around $20 to $30 for a return. Um, obviously, the longer you stay, the more you'll save on long-term accommodation, gym, co-working, transport, etc. by doing monthly deals as well. Like I said, Airbnb has good month long discounts. Our friend Alex got a really nice apartment in Ho Chi Minh City for like 450 USD a month. Crazy. Wow. Next chapter is transport. How do you get around in Vietnam? Well, first off, there's motorbikes and scooters. It's extremely popular for motorbike enthusiasts to rent a bike and do a trip down the entire length of the country, north to south, or vice versa. Another popular route is to do the high giant loop. You need to be a skilled driver here though because the buses and trucks in this area are quite insane. It's quite dangerous. Then the next way to get around is obviously like we mentioned Grab and Gojek. These are the ones we recommend and are basically the easiest mode of transport. For a quick trip across the city you're looking at about a dollar. Super super affordable. Shuttles are the next mode of transport. Our tour agency booked these for us most of the time. They were really fancy, ones with Wi-Fi, aircon, reclining seats and they even came with some water and snacks. Highly recommend using a shuttle. This was definitely the best way to get around and they stop for toilet breaks every few hours. If you're looking for the best agency, we love working with Vietnam Escape Tours so we'll leave their link down below for you. Next are buses. There are these cool sleeper buses that are dirt cheap with toilets on board. We've heard some complete mixed reviews about these though. I guess it depends on what kind of traveler you are. We'd say go ahead and do it for the experience if you don't mind roughing it a bit. Just take motion sickness tablets as discussed beforehand in case and pack some snacks. We've also heard they're really loud and you don't get much sleep actually even though they're sleeper buses so keep that in mind. Next up are trains. Nearly all the tourist destinations are connected by trains. It's way faster than the bus. It's a little more expensive but definitely more comfortable. You can get these luxury cabins with food and toilets on board as well and you can book these on 12 Go Asia. And then finally, flights. This is the quickest and easiest way to get around, really. Yeah. Flights are super cheap and fast as well. Sapa, Ninbin, Halong Bay and Hoi An don't have airports though. However, most of the other tourist destinations and cities do. You can get a Vietjet or AirAsia flight for as little as $15 or $20, excluding baggage, between Hanoi, Da Nang, Ho Chi Minh City, Phu Quoc, Nha Trang, Dalat, etc. Now let's talk about the traffic. There's no denying the fact that Vietnam has some of the most chaotic roads in the world, but it also depends on where you are and what time you're there. The traffic in the major cities, no matter the time of the day though, is just absolutely bonkers. <laughs> There's no escaping it. There's just a sea of motorbikes, tons of hooting and beeping. It's flipping it's dramatic. It's so dramatic. <laughs> I remember sitting every morning in the heat and the bike fumes on the way to school to teach and I just hated my life. Red also got really sick from the pollution in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, but luckily you won't experience this as a tourist and only if you're planning to teach there long term. Our biggest trip if you're going to teach in Vietnam is stay as close to your school as possible. Seriously, you'll thank us later. <laughs> One more tip I just forgot to mention. If you are going to stay in Vietnam for long periods of time and do spend a lot of time on the scooter, then bring a mask. It's quite common to wear a mask in the traffic. It's not for COVID reasons, it's literally just to stop the pollution from going into your lungs. Good tip. And then this is very serious guys, how do you cross the road in Vietnam? <laughs> because you'll see videos of motorbikes and cars and bikes just going, they never ever stop. There's actually like very few traffic lights in Vietnam as well. So you might feel like you literally cannot go through the road, like you cannot cross. All you have to do is walk and very slowly and the bikes will literally just flow past you. You'll feel like Jesus, like you're parting the traffic. Uh, cars don't, they don't stop for you, so keep your eyes 
there, if there is a car coming, then you have to stop. Uh, otherwise, they'll just bash you over. Trucks as well. <laughs> if you're planning to motorbike Vietnam, just plan enough time for travel in the morning and evening peak hours. But honestly, once you're in the countryside, traffic is not bad at all. You'll be fine. All right, next up is language and culture. Vietnamese is the official language of Vietnam, spoken by about 85% of the population, but there are minor languages used and you'll see that especially in Yatsa regions like Sapa. Will you need to learn Vietnamese to get by in Vietnam? No, and honestly you don't stand a chance even if you were to try. Vietnamese is a tonal language and most English speakers will have a really hard time learning it. It takes years of practice. We're still not sure how to say thank you properly, yet thousands of people have told us. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't know. Luckily, most locals will understand English and they'll speak in broken English as well because English learning is so huge there. That's why there's so many teaching opportunities, guys. Vietnamese people are so friendly and they'll appreciate you trying to speak their language, but they'll also have a hard time understanding your broken Vietnamese if you try speaking their language to them. Everybody will just be confused. Uh, it's fun though. The only words we really found that we needed in Vietnam were Xin Chao, Nam Phi, Cafe Sua Da, Pho, Ban Mi, and, and Kham Un, which is Kham Un. thank you. <laughs> Like we said, we still don't know if we say it correctly. It's hard, guys. It's hard! The three main religions are Taoism, Buddhism, which is roughly around 55%, and then Confucianism. We learned a lot about it all in Ninh Bin through our guide, which was really, really awesome. In terms of history, my goodness, Vietnam has a bit of a long and dark history. The country has been through a lot from being dominated by China, to being colonized by France, then the Portuguese, coming in there a little bit and then Japan too obviously in World War II. And then of course the most recent Vietnam War with America. It's all a lot to take in. We do encourage you to come here and learn basically for yourself. All of the periods have had a huge impact on the country though you'll see it when you're there. Chinese culture and norms shine through the language, religious holidays and food with red lucky cards and mooncakes everywhere. The French and Portuguese colonial periods have had an influence on religion and the architecture. There is a large number of Catholic churches everywhere with 7% of the population identifying as Catholic. The French even influenced the food with the baguettes, the famous banh mi, and snails. You can eat those if you want and the architecture in Sapa, Hanoi, and Hoi An. And also the use of the Latin alphabet, fun fact. But our favorite is the Vietnamese modern culture. The Vietnamese hats, the gorgeous dresses a woman wear, the cafe culture, the coffee culture, the beer drinking on the streets, karaoke on the corner at night, huge food markets, and the war helmets. It's such an iconic country and is really so culturally stimulating. Next up, things we recommend that you do. Let's go quickly. Definitely do a luxury cruise in Ha Long Bay. We absolutely loved it and you can watch this video linked above to see what it was like. And then secondly, you definitely have to do the Sapa trekking with a local and staying in their homestay. It was one of the most memorable times of our lives, really. Again, you can see that link in our Vietnam itinerary video. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it after this for real. It was so epic. We were really happy with that trip. Yo! It was amazing. Then we recommend Hoi An, although we haven't been there ourselves. Most people rave about it. Then do a food tour in either Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi. You definitely have to dive into that. They're always a ton of fun to do and you learn so much about the culture and you meet new friends. It's awesome. And then for the rest of the things we recommend, we're actually just going to put it in a Vietnam top 10 video. So hopefully that's out by the time you're watching this video and you can check that out. <laughs> And then lastly, we highly recommend that you do teaching. If you're bored of your life and you want a complete change, doesn't matter what age you are, we would never be where we are today if we never took the risk and moved to Vietnam. Ninja Teacher is a company we did our TESOL course through and they helped us move over there in 2018. One suggestion though, you do need mental stability to move to Vietnam. It will test you in certain aspects that you've never been tested in before. But we'll cover that later on under safety. Alright, next is where to stay. Oh gosh, let's go over this quickly then. 
We're going to cover our top destinations and then where to stay on each. In Hanoi, we recommend staying in the Old Quarter. This will be your base from which you explore Ninbin, Sapa, Halong, and that's it here. <laughs> then in Ninbin, stay in the central Tam Park area. In Sapa, stay in Sapa Town for a couple of days before you start your trekking and then stay in the local homestay in Lao Chai during the trek. And if you want a break in nature, then definitely stay at the Topaz Eco Lodge. It's, it's spectacular, it's out in nature and we actually have a photo that we never stayed there. How Long Bay, we, as we mentioned before about the cruises, there's over 200 cruises to choose from. We did the Mon Sherry cruise, it was fab, but they are the puny and the orchid cruises that are also really good. Have a look on Vietnam Escape Tours at their website, at all your options, and then book through them. They'll take care of all the transport and planning. They are fab guys, for real. Ho Chi Minh City, stay anywhere in District 1. This is the most happening central part of the city. In Da Nang, stay anywhere at Mikey Beach. My Ann was a quaint little neighborhood that we loved so much. And then in Hoi An, stay anywhere in the old town to be close to everything as well. In Phu Quoc, it doesn't really matter where you are actually. So just staying at Fusion Resorts though, they were fab. And then Shun Hin. Both were fantastic. Do note though, we visited this island in 2019 and a hell of a lot has changed since then. We've heard it has become a little bit kitsch, so take it into consideration. It's not going to be very authentic there. All right, now let's talk about what to eat. Oh wow, we love Vietnamese food now, but we really didn't enjoy it back in 2018 and 2019. It's pretty important to know that it's delicious if you do it the right way and not so good if you wing it. You have to be going to the best street food stands and the best restaurants. Vietnamese people eat pretty exotic stuff. Uh, there will be all sorts of foreign meals that you come across and we suggest you stick to the basics. They are as follows. The definitely beef pho. It's the national dish of Vietnam and of my heart as well. Chicken pho is great too as long as it's a nice restaurant. Definitely fresh spring rolls and yep. deep fried spring rolls. Ah, so yum. Definitely banh mi, bun cha, ban xiao, and mi wang. Mi wang. They are all so good, but they have to be at a nice restaurant. Uh, bo ko is one of my favorite dishes in Vietnam. It's like a stew. I love stew. Snails, you can eat those if you're brave. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's from the French influence. And then if you're wondering where on earth all these best restaurants and street food stands are, you're in luck because we've listed a number of them, basically all of them, in our Vietnam resource pack within our Google Map link. You're welcome. <laughs> To drink, wow, definitely Cafe Suida, which is coffee with condensed milk. It's amazing. Then there's egg coffee. It sounds a bit disgusting, but it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Don't be put off at all. Then Clary's favorite, coconut coffee. Definitely awesome too. Then try a Saigon beer and also the Hanoi beer. The beer in Vietnam is actually really good and super cheap. Vietnam isn't really known for its desserts, but we do like Ban Bo, which is a sweet chewy sponge cake made from rice flour, water and sugar and it's usually filled with yummy red beans. Then there are Ban Kam, which is a donut <laughs> bowl looking thing coated with sugar or honey, filled with sweet mung bean paste and sometimes fruit. It was quite good. Vietnam is actually the least most obese country in the whole world and that's basically because of the food. It's actually really healthy guys. You'll find when you get there there's lots of leafy greens, some rice noodles, lots of rice actually in all forms, yeah. <laughs> pancakes, noodles, broken rice, all sorts, nice broths and then lots of fruits. They love their fruits as well. It's pretty clean eating. Mm. All right, things to remember, always try stuff that's cooked in front of you or always have a local guide on the streets in case. Then the next category is water and ice. You can't drink the tap water, but bottled water is as cheap as chips. To limit plastic use though, we recommend bringing a refillable bottle, always travel with one of those. And part of the Vietnamese experience is drinking beer with ice in it. Like everyone serves beer with ice in it. But in the nine months of us living in Vietnam, we did not get sick once from water or ice. Don't stress about it at all. The only thing that you do need to be careful of that might make you very sick is alcohol. And that brings us to the next chapter. Vietnamese people love their beer and they love partying, drinking and karaoke in the evenings. Beer is ridiculously cheap here with a can costing you around 50 cents USD.
However, hard liquors, they can make you extremely sick, guys. The most sick I have ever seen red, ever, was after a night out on Boy Bend Street in Ho Chi Minh City. Be careful. It's horrendous. I believe I said something along the lines of, I'm, I'm hanging, hanging like, like a wizard's wizard sleeve. sleeve. <laughs> uh, was it? <laughs> it wasn't even the next day. You weren't day hanging yet. yet, you were drunk AF. Oh, Yo, he was ill. <laughs> then, beer and wine are readily accessible in the mini marts all over the country. We even found South African wine in a mini mart in our building. How so sick is that? Amazing. Four cousins <laughs> even. <laughs> and then, another alcohol alternative you'll see everywhere in the party streets in Vietnam are balloons. I think they're laughing gas. We've never tried them and that's because one of our friends literally fell over like this after trying and another one of our friends looked like she was having a freaking stroke. Her face fell like this. Oh yeah. my word, if you have low blood pressure I feel like you should not be trying those balloons. Please be careful guys. Well just avoid it. <laughs> I mean if you wanna you can I guess. Marijuana and all other drugs are highly illegal in Vietnam so just be noted. Bang. Next up is vaccinations. In terms of COVID, there's no such thing anymore, so let's move on. In terms of other vaccinations, we always travel with up-to-date typhoid and hepatitis A and B shots. They're not required, although they are highly recommended. Okay, let's talk about travel insurance. It's not required, but as with all international travel, we 100% recommend that you sign up for some form of travel insurance to assist you if you have any travel-related problems or need to be hospitalized or compensated for like a missed delayed flight. A missed delayed flight. <laughs> <laughs> and because you're doing a lot of adventurous stuff like hiking, trekking, motorbiking, boating, you need to be covered guys we'll link our favorite safe doing travel insurance down below another thing though if you're doing the motorbiking in vietnam no insurance will cover you unless you've got a motorbike license and unless you're wearing a helmet i also feel like you'll need a higher coverage in case something does happen to you so maybe consider looking at safety wings health insurance it does give you a lot more coverage uh, one thing I want to mention as well, uh, hospitals in Vietnam will not help you unless you've got a huge lump sum available up front. Like you don't pay after the treatment, you pay up front, so keep that in mind. Alright, next up is the length of stay. We recommend either 7, 10 or 14 days and it depends on how much of the country you're wanting to see. We say seven if you're just doing either the northern or the southern parts of the country. Then we say around 10 days if you plan to do northern Vietnam, Da Nang and Hoi An. 14 days if you want to do northern Vietnam, Da Nang, Hoi An, Phu Quoc and Ho Chi Minh City. And then three weeks if you want to do more than that. There's also other cities like the Lac to explore which is also pretty cool. Clearly or, doesn't agree. <laughs> or if you want to do it at a, a slower pace then yeah. definitely plan for three weeks. Next is electricity. Be sure to pack the appropriate travel plug adapter that fits the local sockets. The type C and D sockets are the official standards in Vietnam and they look like this. Vietnam uses the same plugs as South Africa. Let's talk about SIM cards and internet. Vietnam kills the internet and Wi-Fi game. No matter where you are, you will always have great internet. They have a number of providers. We've used Vinaphone, Viettel and Mobifone. All of them had amazing coverage and was so affordable I don't understand it we got like 5 gigs data a day for 10 USD dollars for 30 days and we picked the sim cards up at the airport where they're supposed to scam you where they're supposed to be super expensive and they get it working for you instantly it's fab we always suggest having a sim card so that you have data on the go to get taxis and to contact people wherever you are a lot of the locals and businesses use WhatsApp, so having this sim was also super important to talk to our guides and our travel agents. In terms of internet, you can connect almost everywhere. The cheapest $15 Airbnbs have 100 megs, sometimes <laughs> even 300 megabits per second. You won't have a problem in Vietnam at all with Wi-Fi. There was even internet at our homestay in Sapa and Ninbin. How oh, insane! <laughs> Next up is tipping. Restaurants don't require tipping here, but they won't be offended if you do tip. Tour guides do kind of expect tips from you, so make sure you've got cash if you were happy with their service. We were overwhelmed with the locals in Sapa. They begged us a lot and everywhere we went, we've never been harassed like that before for money or buying things. A lady literally followed us like three kilometers down the road into our hotel, even after we said no. 
Don't feel obliged to give all these people your money though, only if they're guiding you or if you want to buy something from them. Next up is pharmacies. There are pharmacies everywhere in Vietnam. Anything starting with the word pharma is a pharmacy. We use Pharmacity and the more Western pharmacy called Guardian. We always experience interesting things in pharmacies in the world. First, uh, in Vietnam, they've got headache patches. I needed these while we were teaching in Vietnam because the kids were so loud, I had headaches every day. Another thing in Vietnam, they are huge believers of Chinese medicine. I saw these strange health packets with starfish and snakeskin in them. Their health choices are questionable, often using animals for benefits. Vietnam are also the biggest illegal importers of rhino horn. So because we're from South Africa, there's definitely moral crashes there. Alright, next up is laundry. Because Airbnb apartments are so affordable, we suggest booking these instead of hotel rooms so that you can do your own laundry. If not, then laundromats are basically everywhere in all major cities and it's really super affordable. They can mess up your clothing a bit, so make sure you check their reviews on Google first. Let's talk about the weather and natural disasters now. The biggest concern in Vietnam are typhoons, flooding and landslides all connected to the rainy season. Flooding. Some parts of the big cities completely flood in peak rainy season and it's a nightmare getting around, especially on a motorbike. It's one of the things we absolutely dreaded when working in Ho Chi Minh City. Rivers can also flood, flash floodings occur. We're talking water as high as your waist, it's no joke. And then landslides, we had a taste of this in Sapa and it was actually terrifying. The main road completely closed on the way to Sapa from Hanoi, we were delayed by like two hours. There was a landslide that engulfed two cars and when we got to Sapa we saw huge mountains and rice fields had fallen next to us. Roads were covered in stones and mud. The paths during the Sapa hike were even extremely dangerous. We were worried and so were the local guides actually. They ended up taking us on a completely different, safer route. So we mentioned in the weather section just completely avoid rainy season if you want a smooth sailing holiday. Mm. Next up, what to skip. We like to do these sections to let you know honestly from the bottom of our hearts what is not worth spending your time and money on. First up, we think Nha Chang. We lived there for two months and honestly we don't think it's worth it unless you're going to go scuba diving or you have an interest in some of the nightlife. Then next up is Phu Quoc. Our friends recently went there and they just did not enjoy it. They've built these huge like theme park areas, massive uh, artificial kind of world grand world <laughs> things and they inspired by like Italy they've got the Venice canals and all sorts solid no though from us we don't travel all the way to Vietnam to experience things like that we want the authentic travel you know I think it is more aimed at the local tourists in Vietnam those places probably yeah then De Lat. It's a mountain town, but really rather do Sapa. It's very similar and Sapa is way more beautiful and has stunning rice fields. De Lat is only worth seeing if you want colder weather and you've got some extra time in Vietnam, but we wouldn't prioritize it if you've only got a few weeks there. Alright, next up is safety. Vietnam has been ranked one of the safest countries in the world for travelers, even for solo females. I used to roam around completely by myself on a motorbike and I felt 100% safe. Petty theft can still occur here, so always be aware of your personal belongings, especially in crowded places like markets and then when you're on the back of a motorbike. There are guys that zoom past you and try and grab your phone or your belongings. Uh, we even experience that one late night in Ho Chi Minh City. And then also when you're standing on the side of the road on your phone, just turn your back because they will try and grab your phone from you as well. Then there's something we've noticed and we just have to address it, mental health trigger warning. Like I said, if you plan to live in Vietnam, you need a thick skin and you need to be a mentally stable person. We've had more friends in Vietnam unalive themselves than anywhere in the world. I'm not exactly sure why it happens. I do think maybe people are just going to Vietnam trying to find themselves and fix all their problems and it just doesn't work out for them. I just have to bring this up because while teaching in Vietnam was the best thing we ever did, it's sadly not the same for everyone and we want our bruise to be safe and happy. Also, I formed anxiety in Vietnam, so that gives you a bit of an insider. Yeah, it's very loud there. It's loud, it's chaotic, and it can be lonely. 
Alright, let's talk about scams. These bicycle cart guys in Hanoi, they'll try to get you on their cart and then they'll give you a certain price and then they'll overcharge you once the ride is done. <laughs> Then these ladies carrying the cute little baskets and then offering for you to take photos with them and then they, while you're holding the baskets, taking the photo, they open up a coconut and then they charge 150 for the coconut instead of like 15 or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> smart ladies, hustlers. Yeah. <laughs> Bars and clubs selling you cheap alcohol instead of the real stuff, that's for real. They often fill these original bottles with crappy stuff so just be aware, it also makes you ill like I mentioned. Then a lot of hotels bribe their customers with free breakfast in return for a 10 out of 10 rating. So don't be shocked when you get to your highly rated hotel and it's shite. It happened to us in Sapa. Then the ATMs giving you the wrong amount of cash or skimming your cards. But as we mentioned before, just use the legit ATMs and you should be fine. Then lastly, there are some motorbike rental scams. So make sure you always check Google reviews before using a company. We have some really good legit ones linked for you in our resource pack though. And lastly, the other section. <laughs> There's not much to mention in this section except to elaborate on something we mentioned earlier in the video. Vietnam has unfortunately norms that are just a huge moral conflict for some people. We've already discussed the rhino poaching and the Chinese medicine, but they also eat a lot of dogs, horses, buffalo, worms, snails, everything. It's not always up in your face, but if you're sensitive to this stuff, Vietnam might not be for you. And yeah. That's it. We've covered everything you need to know about Vietnam. If you have any questions or you think that there's something that we missed, please leave it down below in the comments. Don't forget to grab our resource pack. And finally, please leave this video with a like. It really helps more people see it. We'll see you, Bruce, in the next one. Safe travels to Vietnam. Tam Viet. Tam Viet.